We are learning Sichedalid of Parshas Kisisa in Chelik Tezayin on page 408. The shir today is being learned, Lilanishmas of Yosef bin Yamin, then Rav Menasha Koltman. In Pasik, Vayidaba Hashem al Moshe, the Pasik says the Abish just spoke to Moshe and told him, Lech Mize, you should go up from here. Ata Yu Vahom and the nation, Ashahalesa Me'eretz Mitzrayim, that you have uh, brought out from Mitzrayim. This is, of course, the Pasik after the Chet Egel, and the Abishter forgave the Eden, and they, this is what the Abishter tells Moshe Rabbeinu. Is Rashi Mefadish in the Mtsvetan Dibra Maschal, so Rashi on the second Dibra Maschal says as follows Ato Vehoam, when it says you and the nation, Kan Loyoma Vaamcha. Here, it does not use the term Amcha, your nation, rather, it says you and the nation, and earlier on, it did say your nation. As the Rebbe will now explain here, what uh, Rashi is coming to say. The Pashtas, so simply, the Pshat and this Rashi is as follows. Kumter Pirish Rashi Behemshech, Tzum Tzveten Pirish, in Friedigen de Bramascho Lecha Lemizet. What Rashi is saying here is following up what he said earlier, in the second Pshat, on the words, Lech Ale Mize, go up from here. And the Rashi there says as follows. Kla Pesha Malei Bishas Akas Lech Reid, since before, when the Ebesha was angry with the Yidin and with Meshe Rabbeinu, the Ebesha says to him, go down. So now when the Ebesha was appeased and the Ebesha forgave Yidin, the Ebesha says, that it's time to go back up. And then following up to this, Rashi says, As point, when we get to Meshe and the Ebesha do the Zogen, so just like he explained before that the word Alei, the Ebesha was coming to heal and remedy this that he said before that you should go down. Similar also regarding the Yidin themselves. So now the Ebesha is saying Ha'om, the nation, which means Tumura Zeh. Instead of this, was Freer at the Ebesha gesagt Lech Reid Kishiches Amcha that you have to go down a level because your nation has become corrupt that you took out of Mitzrayim. This is an expression When it says your nation has become corrupt this is the term your nation is not a praiseworthy expression. As Rashi over there says What does this mean? It doesn't say that the nation has become corrupt Ela Amcha, it's your nation. Erev Ra, these are the Erev Ra, which is the Mitzrayim that came and were mixed into Klal Yisrael and joined the Yidin to leave Mitzrayim. Shekibalta mehatzmacha chulu, that you accepted on your own. Heim shicha suvi yishchisu, they became corrupted and corrupted others. So now, hot Rebishter itzter gezogt lecha leimize. Now the Rebishter is saying you get elevated, and over here it says ato vehaom you and the nation and nitva Amcha. And not using this negative term, saying that it's your nation that you accepted without my permission, without my agreement. That's the simple pshat of this Rashi. The question, however, is It's understood in the previous Pasik was Retzach wegen the Meirev Rav. So there, yes, it speaks about the Eirev Rav. They were corrupted and corrupted others. Is move on for what Rashi daf mifarish zayin dem diuk was the pasuk zokt amcha. So there Rashi is explaining what this term amcha your nation means. Unit ha'am not the nation like it always says regarding Yidden. For a busy busy it's not been noch nit gelernt as not erev rav veren ongeruf an amcha. We never learned until this point that it's the erev rav specifically that are referred to as your nation. So Rashi is explaining this, that Amcha means the Eid of Rav, and they are referred to as your nation. Aber, however, noch dem, in unser Pasig, but then when you come here in our Pasig, was Retzach wegen dem Gen, Ken Eretz Yisrael, with Eibish that says to Meish Rabbeinu that now Yidin could go up and they'll be able to enter into Eretz Yisrael, Alei el Oretz HaShen Eshbati, that you go up to the land that I promised, Retzach doch bepashtus wegen alle Yidin. Here it's simply understood that who's going to Eretz Yisrael? All Yidin are going. What's unique about the fact that here it says Vihaam and that why would I think that it should say anything different? Why should it say Amcha, which is your nation, only the Eid of Rav? And Rashi has to come and explain 
And the Khan loy Oma Amcha, that here it does not say Amcha, your nation, like it said before. It's self understood. Here it's talking about all Yidin going to Eretz Yisrael. So that means everybody. Ha'am, the nation, not only Amcha, which is the Eid of Rav. Uli Yidach, and the question is on the other hand, Oivis is Da'asvara. If there's any reason to say, as all Yidin zol ongeru from Veren Oich Amcha, that all Yidin should be referred to as your nation, and over here, in this context, they should be referred to with this term, with this name of your nation. And therefore here, this is a novelty and there's some, some special emphasis that we would expect that they would be referred to as your nation. But nevertheless, the Pasuk refers to them as the nation. Rashi should have already pointed this out in an earlier Pasik where it says, Go and guide the nation that I've spoken to you about. Which is already written two Psukim earlier. And there Rashi should have already pointed this out. That here it does not use the term Amcha, it uses the term Ha'am. So the question basically is, Memonavshach. If the term Ha'am needs a clarification, because we expect that it should have said Va'amcha, Rashi should have clarified it earlier. And if we're going to say that it's no need to clarify it there, because it's obvious that Ha'am means the Yidin, the nation, so then there's no need to clarify it in this Pasik of Leich Halei Mizeh Atav Ha'am either. It's simple. So it goes on all the Yidin. So why does Rashi here have to say, Kan Loi Omar V'amcha? Amazing. Just four words in this Rashi. And the Rebbe will take out a whole entire pshat and a huge chiddush in the parsha here, with a lot of depth and a whole Indian also from Yenu Shaltayr, as we'll see. As there be it in them, so the pshat here is as follows. Rashi built move on. Really, what Rashi is answering over here is not only the word Vehaam itself, but there's something else that's not understood here. The fact that Hashem tells Moshe Rabbeinu regarding himself that he should go up, that he's getting elevated, that's understood. Because up until this point, we don't find that the status of Yiride when he, was, when he descended, that happened before, was removed from him. So now it says, Alei, Moshe Rabbeinu is being elevated again. But the question is, regarding all Yidin, regarding the nation, the question is, why does it have to say this? That Hashem tells Moshe Rabbeinu, go and lead the nation as I have spoken to you. So why does it have to add and say again that you should go and go up to the land? What is this adding more than what it already said earlier that you should go and lead the nation and take them to Eretz Yisrael? And we see that this is something new, something additional. As this is given in a dibur from Eivish. Eivish says this is a separate time that Eivish speaks to Moshe and tells him this. As it says, Eivish comes separately and tells Moshe, go up with your nation, with the nation that is. And not only this, there's also a break between what it said before, Leich Nechei, that you should lead them, and now again a new Dibur, that you should go up with them, and it interrupts this with the story of Ayigif Hashem Asam Gaimer. So, what's the reason for this? What's, what's the novelty of this, uh, that Abish is saying something new over here, Leich Alemizeh? Rashi, so to answer this question, Rashi says, As the Tzvei Psukim redden wegen Tzvei, Bazundere Sugim. The two psukim, the pasuk where it says leich nechei, go lead the people, and this pasuk when it says alei that the nation should go up, to take the nation and go up with them. It's two different things. Leich nechei esam goimer. When it says before go lead the people, ret vegen the bnei Avram Yitzchak veYakiv. There it's speaking about all the Eden, bnei Avram Yitzchak veYakiv. On the other ash achotli amchenem esifri. And there's the others that are not going to merit to go up. All the others that are not Pnei Avram, Yitzchak, Yaakov, what happens to them? In other words, referring to the Eid of Rav. They're going to be wiped out from the Sefer Torah. They, they, they'll all die. That's what it said earlier. Leich Nechei. But on the Noch, Noch Vayigav Hashem Gaimer. Ketzas Mepirayim. And then after there was a plague. And there was some punishment that he received. Alashaso Se'egel, for those that did the Egel. Now the Torah here is coming and saying a big Chiddush and because this is such a novel thing this is an Eibish that comes and tells Moshe Rabbeinu separately 
you should go up with the nation. So over here, that nor began the Eid of Rav. This Pasik is not referring to Yidin anymore. It's referring to the Eid of Rav, to Moshe Rabbeinu's nation. This has to be said separately and this has to be clarified and they have to be rectified separately because the Kaman Sifes will be explained soon in Sifei. And therefore the Abish is saying separately that not only are you going to go and lead all the Yidin, but now you should go up with a nation referring to the Eid of Rav. Okay, so that's why on this, Rashi has to come and say that over here it is referring only to Moshe Rabbeinu's nation. And nevertheless, it does not say Amcha, it says Ha'am, the nation. Apizez, Eich Galatik, was the Pasuk Zogta, why the Pasuk here says, the Ha'am Asher Ha'leisam, Yeretz Mitzrayim. This is the nation that you have brought out of Mitzrayim, as Moshe Tzirah is going to move from Mitzrayim. The Zelbe Lashem Vasashteit Friyer is the same expression that it says earlier when it says, Shichis Amcha Asher Ha'leisam, Yeretz Mitzrayim, that the nation that you brought out of Mitzrayim has become corrupt. Which refers to the Eid of Rav that Moshe Rabbeinu accepted on his own. Here in this Pasik, refers only to the Eid of Rav. It doesn't refer to all the Eden that it already said earlier in the Pasik. Go and lead the nation. So now the difference between the two categories that we're speaking about over here, in the Pasuk Leich Nechei, and then in the Pasuk when it says Leich Alei Mizeh, that the nation, referring to the Eid of Rav, that will also go up to Eretz Yisrael, is clear from what it says in the Pasuk. <coughs> Rashi, Hachem Friyem Mefarish Given. Rashi already explained earlier, Shalish Mises Nidoinu Sham. That at that time, there were three different ways how the Yidin died, those that served the Eagle. In Yashayd and Vasra, those that served the uh, Eagle, uh, the desert of the Eagle, and there were witnesses for this, and they were also warned, Besayef. So their death was with a sword. Eid and Beloy Asra, those that were witnesses, but there was no warning, Bemagefa, they died in the plague. Loy Eid and Beloy Asra, those that died, and there were, again, those that uh, served the Eagle, of Vedizara, and there were no witnesses and no warning, Behadraikin, Shabbatka Mamayim, Vitzavu Bitneim. So this was this illness in them, in their throat, in their stomach. They drank waters, the special waters that Moshe Rabbeinu prepared, and their stomach burst. So, three, three different ways, that's Rashi explains. Now, by the Shalish Mises, Vizever and the Pasik. So now if you look how the Torah describes how these three deaths, and that the Yidin were punished, happens. Gefintmen Ashinri Bailet. You see something in the Pasik which is very clear, a very clear difference in the language of the Pasik. By Saif, when it comes to those that died with the sword, state by Yipal Minaam, that they, the, those from the nation fell with the sword. Oich by the Magefe, when it came to those that died in the plague, state by Yigif Hashem Esaam, that Hashem brought, Hashem brought a plague on the nation. Da Kegen by Divas Botke Mamayim Vitzavu Bitneim. By contrast, when it talks in the Pasik about those that the waters went inside of them and their stomachs burst. Shteid by Yashk as Bnei Yisrael, that Moshe Rabbeinu gave to drink the Yidin. Here it uses the term Bnei Yisrael, not the term Ha'am, the nation. What's the difference? So the Chiluk zwischen Am und Bnei Yisrael in Pashtos, so very simply, the difference between the term the nation and the Yidin is, Am is Kailo, the Gansom folk. The term Am includes the entire nation, Oich de Geirim, including the converts, which is also including the Eid of Rav. B'nai Yisrael, however, the term B'nai Yisrael, when it's come to Nigut Am, and especially here, when it comes in contrast to the term Am, that it says by the other two ways of how they died, meant B'nai Avram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. It refers specifically to the Eden, the descendants of Avram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. On vidas is eichem pasuk by Yitzchak Mitzrayim. You see this clearly in the pasuk by Yitzchak Mitzrayim itself. What does it say there? Vayisu B'nai Yisrael, Goimer. The Eden traveled. K'shei Shmei is Elif Ragli HaGvarim, Goimer. That there were 600,000, which were the men. And then it says, Vigam, Erev Rav, Olaita. And also, there was an Erev Rav, there was others from the Mitzrayim that were mixed in to, along with them. So, they're not part of the Bnei Yisrael in the beginning of this Pasuk. So, Zetman, as the Erev Rav, <coughs> that the Erev Rav here, Geit Nitarain, in their Mitzvah from the Samech Ribe, from Bnei Yisrael. They're not included in the number of 600,000 that it says in the beginning of the Pasuk, which is the number of the Yidin. So now if so, based on this, there's a, a, a very big Chiddush that comes out of this Pasuk. And it's as follows. 
Vibalt, as the Pasuk zogt by Yashkes B'nei Yisrael. Since the Pasuk says that who are the ones that drank these waters that caused them to die by their stomach bursting? It was only B'nei Yisrael, only Yidin. It's the Fon Mochach, so it's clear from this, as that Eid of Ra hat men nit mashke given. That the Eid of Ra did not drink these waters. Or be meil adaf mezagin. If so, we must say, as as div from Eid of Ra, that those of the Eid of Ra, as some gedint the megal, beloy Eid them a beloy asra, they did serve the Avedis Zara, but without any witnesses or any warning, then a gebliven lev, they remained alive. So you would think that the, all of the Eid of Ra served the Eagle of Avedis Zara. Some with Adam, some without, some with warning, some without. So you would think they all passed away in one of these three ways. But from the fact that it says that the ones that drank these waters were who? The Bnei Yisrael. So we have a huge Chiddush here. That even after the story of the Egel, the Eid of Rav, some of them survived and continued to remain together with Kal Yisrael. On their Emchenu Misifri, when it says in the Pasuk, I will wipe them out from my, from my, from my Sefer. Is nit given lachaloisam yachad? It doesn't mean that they're all going to be wiped out now together at, at this time period. Not ubiyoyim pakti upakadti vibabnei yisrael. But similar to what it says bchalal regarding the egel, regarding all yidden, that this is a punishment that comes over the times of history, the different time periods. When Hashem punishes, it includes a punishment for the egel. For am oich of their eid of rav at Moshe Rabbeinu gebet. The reason why they were saved. Is because even for the aid of Rav as well, Moshe Rabbeinu asked and begged, and the Eibush Tahad Dachke Emfit Shamaiti Alecha. Hashem listened to what Moshe Rabbeinu davened for. So Moshe Rabbeinu davened for all the Yidden, and including for the aid of Rav, that they should not all die here together at once. And therefore, the aid of Rav survived. At least a portion of them survived. But now here the Rebbe explains, the question is, how was it the maid of Rav mit Mashke given? If there were the three different ways of how the people that served the Egel died, and one of them was to give them these waters to drink that caused the stomach to burst, so why would the Eid of Rav spirit of this? Is Rashi does Mavayir in Zayn Pirish of Ayashkas B'nei Yisrael? So this is explained according to what Rashi says when he explains what this method was to give the Yidin to drink from these waters. When in Zayn Pirish Be'em Shecha Parsha, and the Pshat that he says in the continuation of the parsha there. Oi Vayashkes B'nei Yisrael, Zlokt Rashi. On these words, Vayashkes B'nei Yisrael, Rashi explains, Neskavim Lobotkom Kisaitis, that Moshe Rabbeinu's intention was, by giving them these waters to drink, he's going to examine them like it's done with a Saita. A Saita, a woman, that it's unclear whether she sinned, whether she went with a strange person or not, and, and sinned with him. So you drink the waters, and that determines if yes or no. So over here as well, Moshe Rabbeinu was treating this, this category of Yidin, like Saitis. So the question is, these pasta are in from Saitis. This is not just a random thing that Moshe Rabbeinu is doing something similar to a Saita, but he's actually treating these Yidin like the halacha of a Saita. What's the relation here to the concept of a Saita? Is this moving from the from Pirish Rashi in Hemshacha Parsha? It's understood according to what Rashi says later in the Parsha, because they've Psalacha Zakt Rashi, on the words Psalacha, talking about uh, carving out new luches for the Yidin, so there Rashi says, this is an analogy of a king that he got married to a woman, or not exactly fully married yet, but, but there was an arusa, a, a woman that was betrothed to him. And then he left, uh, he left out of town. The king left out of town, that is. And he left the, the, the woman that, that's betrothed to him together with the maidservants. And then what happened? They went and they sinned and they, the, the maids had a relationship with someone else and they slept in the, also the Arusa, the woman that was betrothed to the king as well. And then the rabbi doesn't here bring the whole entire Hamshach of the Mashal, but the Rashi that brings that, that when the king returned and he found out what happened and he was so upset about this and he wanted to punish his to-be wife for what she did, so there's the, uh, a, a, one of the ministers of the king came along and tore the document of their betrothal that there was between them. And he came to the king and said, look, she wasn't really married yet to you. So she was uh, allowed to have relationship with others. That was the point of Moshe Rabbeinu breaking the lucha is to come and be melamed tzchus and yidin and say to Hashem, the yidin were not yet, so to speak, married to you. <clears throat> so Rashi there finishes off. Kach so tu amelech za kodesh baruchu. The king refers to the Eivish, the Ashfachais, the maidservants that are the one that schlepped the woman that's betrothed into these sins. In our case over here, who's the one that schlepped Eden into the Chet Egel? Ela Erev Rav. This is the Erev Rav. Vashushvin. And the one, the minister, or the one that was accompanying and one that was uh, bringing the king together with his wife, Zem Moshe. This is Moshe Rabbeinu that's 
seeking to save the Eden from the, from the punishment of the king. And who is the woman that's betrothed to the Eibishter? Eli Yisrael, this refers to Yidin. So what do we understand from this Mashal of Rashi? This, hey, so what this means is, as the Egel is Bedugmas, their Kilkul for an Arusa, is similar to an Arusa, a woman betrothed that goes and sins and goes and has an outside relationship. And that's the reason why Moshe Rabbeinu gave them to drink these waters like a Saita to examine them to see who served the Egel. That's the reason for this type of death that was brought upon this category of Yidin. So according to this, is move on It's simply understood why the Erev Rav was not included in this at all. As we saw in the Moshul, the maids, they are the Erev Rav. They are not the woman that's betrothed to the king. This method of examining them to see if they sinned, even though they're betrothed to their husband, to the Eibishter, Kaviyachal, is not, does not relate to them at all. So therefore, this, they were not included in this category. And this is how it ended up being that they were spirit, because Meish Rabbeinu Davin, that some of the Erev Rav should be spirit as well. So now, Pikal Anal is Fashtandik. According to all of this, it's understood what is the new point that it's saying when it says go up with the nation and what it already said earlier that you should go lead the nation when it says lead the nation that's speaking about all the Klal Yisrael that did not serve the Egel those amongst Klai Yisrael that actually served the Egel, they already all passed away in one of the three ways that were mentioned before. On the rest of Klai Yisrael that were also, the Eivishter wanted to punish them, and Moshe Rabbeinu davened for them, what was their Aveda? Is bashtanen in them, was the Abnit Meichel given, Their Aveda only consisted of the fact that they were there and that they did not protest and they did not stop it and so on. So that's in the Prosik Leich Nechayisam that Hashem is telling Moshe Rabbeinu regarding all Yidin that did not serve the Egel, that they, you could go and lead them into Eretz Yisrael. By contrast, in this pasuk here, when it says "go up with the with the nation," here Moshe Rabbeinu is notifying him a new thing. As a fillet from the eight of Rav, as something chayt to give him beigel, that even in a portion of the eight of Rav that did sin by the eagle. And they remained alive because they did not have any witnesses or warning for what they did. And that also they will go along, and even more, they will go up. Even they will also get elevated together with the rest of Klal Yisrael. And what is the rest of so now here Rashi explains that since this is a new Chiddush and this, this, the Ebesh is saying that they're going to have an Aliyah, what is that Aliyah? So to Rashi, that's what Rashi is saying, Kan Here it does not use the term your nation, it's because they have Tshuva Giton of Zerchat, because they did do Tshuva on their Aveda. It's the unruf and nit amcha. So therefore, they're not referred to as amcha as your nation in the in the negative sense that they're not deserving to be with the rest of Klal Yisrael. Not a hechadenomen ha'am. They're referred to with a higher with a with a name of ha'am the nation that they're going to be together with Klal Yisrael. That's the chiddush that the eight of Rav did not all die and and many of them remained with Klal Yisrael and went into Eretz Yisrael. The meat is oich for emphit. With this, it's also answered. Was dafke in their pasuk? Was dafke da? Is their pasuk medayik um moisif? Here, the pasuk is very precise, and it adds. Oif in friedig and lech necheis amal ashadi bartin. This is a word that it does not say earlier when it says go and lead the people. Here it says lech ale mize. Go up from this. Atav ha'am gaimer. You and the nation. Why does it say the word mize? Similar to before, it should say, go up, you and the people. So the Tigda is, so the, the, what the reason that the Pasik is saying this is, that they are getting elevated from this. What is the this? The Pasik here is letting you know, here we're not only speaking about all the Klayasol that never actually sinned in the Egel, but we're referring to that portion of the Erev Ra that did sin in the Egel itself. By Moshe, 
so this uh, refers to Moshe was like nesat lechol gedula ela b'shvilam. Whatever greatness Moshe Rabbeinu had is only because of them, because of the Yidden. Owned by the Eid of Rav. And then regarding the Eid of Rav as well, was some gedintem egel. That they actually did serve the egel and mizeh from the egel itself, that they should be elevated. That's the addition of the word mizeh. Mashen came by the uh, Mashen came the Bnei Yisrael, but earlier in the previous pasuk, where it's speaking about all Yidden, Ben Gvelachem Mizak Leich Nechayesam. There it says, Go lead the Yidden. Was haben it gedintem egel. They never served the egel. They just were there. They didn't protest, but they never served the egel. So therefore there the Pasuk is not notifying, Hashem is not telling Meish Rabbeinu you should go up from this, from the Chet Egel itself. So a huge Chiddush here, Rabbi's Chiddush here, that the Eid of Rav remains and goes together with the Yidin. Sof, sof, but in the end the question is, the question still remains, Vi kumtes fort? As dafke from the aid of Rav. So how could this be that specifically from the aid of Rav? They were the main sinners and the main ones that served the Savedazar of the Egel. They were themselves corrupt and they corrupted others. So Alev, Zenanit, Alenidoinu Bimisa. They were not all punished and they did not all die. Umbeis, by Zay state, Nit Nechei, not Alei. The Pasik uses an even more powerful term. Not only lead them, but go up with them. What? So it seems like the, the Eid of Rav have an advantage here over the rest of Klal Yisrael. How could this be? So we can say the answer is as follows. The Hek the Maim Chazal. So it, it says in the Rashi, uh, sorry, it says in the Gemara, as the Mishkan is Nitzchi, that the Mishkan that Moshe Rabbeinu built is everlasting. Because anything that's from the work of Moshe Rabbeinu, that's everlasting. And now the Rebbe explains what the Chiddush in this is. Was the Zov, a Kesev, a Geimer, is given from Ali Yidin. Now the actual materials of the gold and silver and everything else, whose materials were this? Not Moshe Rabbein, it was all donations from the Yidin. Maisa, Mishkan, Vekelov, the actual building, the construction of the Mishkan and all of its vessels, is given Durich Betzal, Vukhulov. It all came from Betzal, Nit Durich Meishem, not through Meishem himself. Nor the Akam is given Ali Dei Moshe. So when we say that the Mishkan is the work of Moshe Rabbeinu and this is eternal, it was just the erecting the Mishkan that was through Moshe. On their beer, and also Moshe Rabbeinu explained to them how to build the Mishkan. Like it says, Asher Har Esa. Hashem showed Moshe Rabbeinu how, all the details of how to build it. So, and that, even though it's not really Moshe Rabbeinu himself that physically went and built everything, it's considered to be the hands, the work of Moshe Rabbeinu, and it's eternal. Allah has come of a kama, so if so, how much more so? Erev Rav shekibaltam yatzbucha v'giyartam. The Erev Rav that you accepted them and you converted them. Vazdamos is this v'ha nefesh asha This is the souls that Moshe Rabbeinu himself made. He, the, the expression that's used by Rashi regarding Avram Avinu. The, he brought them. It's, the, it's his people. For sure, this is the work of Moshe Rabbeinu, and therefore it remains Nitzchiyas. The Eid of Rav continues with Yidin. They went, they entered into Eretz Yisrael with Yidin. So this concludes the Hezber, the Pashtus, the Negeet, the Pshat, and Rashi. What Rashi means with these four words, Kan, Loi, Oma, Amcha. That here the Pasuk is saying a tremendous Chiddush regarding the Eid of Rav, that they came along, they did Shuva, and even those that actually served Egel did Shuva, and they came along with Moshe Rabbeinu to Eretz Yisrael. The deeper explanation we can say regarding this is as follows. The full rectification of this Aveda of the Egel, it's expressed by the fact not only that the Eid of Rav was not fully destroyed, nor Mesaken on Maila given, but rather they were rectified and they were actually elevated into an even higher level. Kidl Kaman, as we'll explain here. This will be understood by Hekdom was Chazal Zogin. With this, that it says in the Gemara, that Benigayat some Chet Egel, regarding the sin of the Egel, that Lo Yisra Ruyin Lo Yisamaisa. It was not befitting for Yidin that they should do this. Right after Matan Teireh, that the Yidin should all of a sudden go and serve Avedi Zara. This is not, this is not something that was on their level to, to happen to them. On the Chet Egel, this that the Chet Egel occurred, Gzeiras Melech Haisachulu, it was a decree of, from the king. And the purpose of this was to give an opening for Bali Tshuva that come later, that sin, and may think to themselves, I'm lost, I have no chance, I have no hope, and they'll see here what happened to Klal Yisrael, that the Ebishter did not wipe them out, and Hashem in the end accepted their Tshuva, and therefore this will give an opening for Yidin in future generations. That's a simple shot of the Gemara.
So the Rebbe tells us is Yudua der beer pnimi in them, but it's known that there's a deeper pshat in this. As their aim from litten pischem pelabali tshuva, when it says here to give an opening to those to do tshuva, meant what this means is nit not to leave shpet to the gebali tshuva. This is not only referring to the bali tshuva in future generations that will learn from this, but also as yidden in yenet site that even the yidden in those times zon tzirikumim tzum ilifun tshuva. That they as well, the Ebishter allowed them to fall through with the Chet Egel, that they should be elevated to a level of Tshuva. Varam Tshuva is the Aveda, was the mensch, ken sich nit eis kleiven lechat chile. Tshuva is a kind of Aveda, a kind of level that no person can choose this on his own from the beginning. Adarab, on the contrary, ha'eme echte va'ashuv. A person that says, I will sin and I will do Tshuva, eme a speaking biyode last as Tshuva. So the Ebishter does not give him the opportunity to do Tshuva, if that's what he says. Tshuva is for someone that fell through, God forbid. So then he's given an opportunity that he could and must do Tshuva. Together with this point that Tshuva is only for someone that sins and God forbid for someone to go ahead and sin with this intention to do Tshuva. Is Faran an illegal in Avedis at Tshuva of Avedis at Tzadikim. There's a tremendous advantage to the Aveda of Tshuva even more than Tzadikim. The Chazal Zogin, as it says in the Gemara, and the Rambam Paskins this, as Mokim Shabali Tshuva him, the main Tzadikim Gemurim, Yechailim Lamed Bay. The place and the level where it's Bali Tshuva stand, the Tzadikim don't have the ability to stand there. On the river. So therefore, Bechdei, the Yidin was an Gevem by Matan Teire. So that the Yidin that were there at Matan Teireh should also come to the level of Tshuva was mitzad atzmam. Then they nid given shayach to the Aveda that they on their own they were not at all able to come to Aveda of Tshuva. Varim shlitim beYitzrom hoya. At that point, Yidin had total control over the Yitzahara. So how are they going to come to any of Tshuva? There was a decree of Hashem as the Yitzharas will can and shaila zain of Zayla Fisha that the Yitzharas should have the ability to take control over them temporarily. And this will elevate Yidin to a higher level, following Matantaira to take them even further to bring them to the level of Tshuva. So here the Rebbe will elaborate and go into a great length regarding the Maila of the Aveda of Tshuva to understand what it is that was accomplished here, and then bring it back to this pasuk of Leich Alei Mize Atov Ha'am. From the Iluim, from the Iluim in Avedis Atshuve, if Avedis at Tzadikim is one of those advantages that there is in the Aveda of Tshuve more than the Aveda of Tzadikim. Was dafke durch Tshuve can be mevarez and in its eitzes kedusha shenoflu. It's only through Tshuve that someone can elevate those holy sparks that have fallen very low and they give finish in Gimel Klipas Atmeis. And they're found in a very low place within the three impure clippers in the world. And this could only be reached through the Aveda of Tshuva. Anodem Yasha Hailuch, a person that goes on a straight path, at Sadik, can Maila Zain, the Nitzaitzis Kedusha, was Gefinin Zich, and in Yoni Rishus Vidivri Heter. He could only elevate those sparks that are found in permissible things in the world, in, in the things that are voluntary, that a person may have their permission to do. Ashenkin in Yoni Yisr, those things that are prohibited, dafer doichezayin, those are things that a person has to reject. A cannot machen from dem dvar Yisr, a dovishal kedusha. A person cannot take something that's that's prohibited and transform it into something which is holy. So therefore, a tzaddik this has no ability to reach into such a low place. A bal tshuva be is durch tshuva shleima, but a bal tshuva when he does a complete tshuva. His accomplishment is that even those premeditated sins are transformed into merits. Not only is he able to annul the evil of the past in his life, nor nochme. The power of tshuva is even more. At his mailet, the mitzaytzis kedusha, he can elevate those holy sparks, that holy energy that was there, stuck in those uh, actions of his past, for zenadon zedinus that are there in those premeditated sins. Bizasivan zachi is the kedusha. So much so that this energy that's there gets elevated into being merits and holiness. That's the tremendous advantage that there is in the avodah of a baal this distinction between a tzaddik and a baltshuva, between a tzaddik and a baltshuva, as dafka a baltshuva is mailed than it says from Gimel Klippas Atmeis, that specifically a baltshuva elevates the sparks that are there in the Gimel Klippas Atmeis, 
is nit nor is not only val atzadik hot nit kenzidainis. It's not only because technically a tzadik hasn't ever fallen to such a place and there are no premeditated sins that he has done and therefore he can't elevate from such a low place. Nor as is oich farbundin mit dem klolis achiluk zwischen avedis atzadikim und avedis atshuva. It's actually also a result of a deeper difference that there is between the Aveda of Tzadikim, the Aveda of Tshuva. The Aveda of Tshuva is a much more powerful Aveda. It reaches from, to a much greater place and therefore it has the power to extend even lower and to elevate from an even lower place. The beer in them, so to explain the power of the Aveda of Tshuva, it's as follows. Mitzad, der Achtus am Mitzvah von dem Eibishen. Because of the absolute unity of Hashem. That Hashem is really one, and everything is really the Hashem in the world. It's all one with Hashem. It's impossible to say, There's no place and no entity that you can say that Hashem's unity does not reach there. That it's outside of Hashem's being. As it says clearly in Gemara, When the Pasuk says that there's nothing other than Hashem Himself, that excludes includes even the kishif in the world, sorcery, and even these powers in the world that deny or fight against the chariot above. Not in them, in them, in their achtos and in dot zveinyanan. This point here, that the unity of Hashem is everywhere, in every place, including in the lowest elements of existence in the world, where there is evil, there's two points to this. There are two approaches to this. Aleph, one approach is, the ra is nitkin stiret so achdusi is barach. The evil that exists in the world is not a contradiction to Hashem's unity. Why not? While it is nit kemitzis, because the evil, the evil aspect of something that exists in the world doesn't is, it does not really exist. Sezaniyim fun heder. The evil that we see, the way it's expressed as being evil, is really void. It's non-existent. Hashem creates this being, and the being that has positive in it, that exists, that Hashem created, the negative aspect of it is a metzius of head. It's nothingness. It's non-existent. Now, it appears to us to exist. It appears to us to have a negative energy that is, that is in existence. So how do you reveal that it's really nothingness? When a person is confronted by a certain Nisayim, by a certain Aveda that presents itself as a real power of evil that's disturbing a person or that's trying to lurk a person into its clutches to do an Aveda, if you overcome it, all of a sudden you'll realize that all of that energy that you thought was there just falls apart and it's really non-existent because there's no negative that exists that could go against Hashem. So if you see something that has power that is against Hashem, it's really void, it's nothingness. And therefore, the way to reveal that is by rejecting it. That's one approach. Base, but then another approach, a deeper level. The holy spark that exists in this entity of evil that exists, everything that exists in the world, including even a evil existence, has a spiritual holy energy that's in it. You're able to extract that holy energy that's there and bring it to unify it with Hashem, with godliness. Even though up until this point, the evil existed with this godly energy in it and the godly energy in it was so concealed. And not only concealed, it became sort of... It, it sort of assumed the nature of this evil that the, the godly energy it now is presented in this world to you as the evil energy in the world. So a person is able to extract that godly energy and elevate it and bring it back to its source. The purpose and the deeper intention of why Hashem creates evil in the world was das is their inyum from the nitzitz kedusha shabbat. The Rebbe explains now here. This is really what it means when we always speak about the godly spark that there is in evil in the world. What is that godly spark? The purpose of the creation of evil. Everything in the world has a purpose of why it was created, and that purpose is the godly energy in it. So now, what is the purpose of the evil that exists in the world? Is as as on this hapech veron letoiv and this alav veron lekedusha that through the avayd of Yidden you should transform it and elevate it and bring it back into holiness. And therefore, it's not only about rejecting and revealing the the nothingness of the fact that this evil in the world 
has no place to exist when Hashem is here, when you see the truth of Hashem. So then this evil and this rejection and this rebellion against Hashem has no room to exist, but even more so, you're able to extract the purpose of why Hashem created it in the first place. Hashem created it in order to create an asylum for a year, whatever the purpose is, and you're able to reveal and extract that godly energy and purpose that's there in the evil in the world and reconnect it to holiness. How are you able to reveal and take out the, the positive, the purpose that there is in the existence of the evil in the world? This is through tshuva. When a person fell to a low place, and then he utilizes that failing itself to then pick himself up with even greater energy to return to Hashem. So now he's, he's extracting the holy energy. There's a purpose here now in this evil, which is aiding him and serving Hashem even more powerful. So therefore he brings us back to Hashem. And Zedain is Nasa like his achis. It becomes merits. They're nitzots, retnis ale in Kedusha. So here the holy spark becomes elevated to Kedusha. So now, so, generally speaking, is das techiluk zvishin achdus Hashem. This is the difference that Chassidus speaks about regarding the revelation of the unity of Hashem in the world. Via says mitzad delokos, as the unity of Hashem is revealed in the world from Hashem's perspective, from above. Um vi das vertnis gale in welt, and then and how this is as this is revealed if you hear from the world below within the avoid in the world below. Mitzad der achdus Hashem via es herzig in welt. When the unity of Hashem, which is sensed here within the world itself. In other words, the entity of the world itself from below is working and coming to the conclusion to see the godliness that there is here in this world. Since the, the evil entity that exists here in the world is thus was said as So this is an entity in the world that's a rebellion to Hashem. So how could you reveal the unity of Hashem in the world? The only way is by rejecting that evil existence in the world. So therefore within this world, the only way you come to the conclusion and see the unity of Hashem in the world is by rejecting the rebellion of Hashem in this world. However, when you reveal the godliness from above that's unlimited, is the amitis amitsis von azach nor ipnimis kavana. So over here, we're not looking at the perspective of the things that are in the world, it's not from the perspective below, the way we see the entity of what exists here in this world. Over here, we have the true perspective. The amitis and that is the, in the, the real entity of what something is. The real purpose of what it is, is what it is from Hashem's perspective. And therefore, the nitzot of Dvar Hashem was Azir Machayat. So everything in the world, including the lowest element, including evil, what is its true entity? The godly spark, which is the godly meaning and purpose that's in it. On the Rebbe mitzadim Dvar Hashem was Azir Kav Ra. From the Abish's perspective, the word of Hashem, which gives life, so to speak, to the evil that exists in the world, Herzich, what is the sense here in the world? As the Metzias von Ra is Dosvos as Vert, Durch Chuven is Allah and Kedusha. The whole evil that exists in the world has a purpose as well. And you could actually reveal that purpose, that godly energy that's there in the, in the evil of the world through the Aveda of Chuva. So this explains why it's specifically through the Aveda of Tshuva that you're able to reach so low and elevate that holy spark within the evil of the world itself. And to accomplish the Zedainis Nasa like Kezachias, as the Rebbe began explaining here, that it's not only because technically the Tzaddik has never fallen to that place, he's just not there to elevate it, and Abal Tshuva is there. But more than that, the actual power and the nature of the Aveda of Abal Tshuva reaches here. Avedis at tzaddikim, what the nature of the Aved of tzaddikim is, bederach hamshochem o maila lamata. They are drawing down in the normal order of things, the way it's required of a year to bring down through his Aved in the world, the hamshoch of godliness from above to below. Mamshach zayna lakos, invelt, to bring down godliness here into the reality of this world. On azayach benegayet tzavara, and the same is also true regarding the approach and the result of what happens through the Aved of Tzadikim regarding the evil in the world. 
They bring the unity of Hashem into the world and they reveal the truth about the Ra and the world as the perspective is in this world here. Tzadikim serve Hashem here in this world and they draw down Hashem into, into the confines of the world according to the perspective of the way things are in this world. And Oilam is Mailim, the world, the perspective in the world is it conceals Mailam or Master, Umenagitzolokos, it covers and it, it, it's opposition to godliness. And how can we in this world reveal the truth of Hashem by drawing Hashem into this world only by rejecting the existence of evil in this world? However, the, 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 the nature of the Avayda Balit is different. It's Bedera Chalo Mulmatala Maila. Balit which is doing Shuva and he's running away from the place that he was and he's changing his ways and he's elevating himself to connecting to Hashem. So he's going up out of this world, a race game from Welt, leaving the confines of the world. So what do they sense? They sense the truth of Hashem that's unlimited from above. And therefore that truth is also revealed regarding the evil entities in the world. That is able to sense and see the true nature and the real meaning of the existence of evil in the world. Which is the word of Hashem, which is one with Hashem Himself, is er maile durch tshuve dem nitzot shebera alikdusha, and therefore Bal Tshuva is able to elevate the holy godly spark, which is the meaning and the purpose of the creation of evil in this world, to be connected to Hashem. So we see a dafke the nature of the avoid of Bal Tshuva is the one that has the power to be mahapach zaynes lezachis to elevate and to reveal the true meaning of the existence of evil in the world. With this we'll understand what Chazal Zagin, what Chazal tell us in the Medrash. As the Sibbe from Chete Egel is gekommen, durch dem, was Yidin haben bei Matten Teire gesehen, der Pnei Shersheb Merkava. What caused the Yidin to fall through in the Chete Egel was the fact that by Matten Teire, the holiest and greatest time, the Yidin then saw when the Ebeshter came down, along with his Merkava, with the chariot, so Pnei Shersheb, the face of an ox, so to speak. So the Yidin saw this, and this is what caused them to serve the eagle. seemingly, This is the most difficult thing to understand. Yes, as we explained before, that the Chet eagle that happened right after Matan Teireh is not understood. And therefore we must say that it's a decree, as the Gemara says, that they wish to decree that this should happen. But why and how is this possible? As a Zalkumen, Fun, Zen, Pnei Shersheb, B'Merkave. That this is a result of the Yidin seeing the Pnei Shair of Merkava, the place, the levels above that are the totally bottled to Hashem. And when? At the time of Matan Teireh. How is this possible? But based on what we learned before, we can understand. That the point of the Egel was not only for future generations to give a Pischa and Pet to but for then. For that time period, Eibishter is looking to elevate Yidin to a higher level to Tshuva. Is this moving? So it's understood. Val di Tshuva from Yidin. This Aved of Tshuva of Yidin is a hemshuch zum gilu from Matan Teira. It's not something that went wrong and went sour, and then Hashem, and then you have, you have to figure out how Yidin are going to pull themselves out of this. This is all a continuation of bringing Yidin to the next level following Matan Teira. At the time Matan Teire, the unity Hashem revealed in the world was that unity that comes from above to below, which comes into the world and therefore is limited. In order to be able to reveal the true existence of everything, of everything in the world, to reveal the true Achtos of Hashem even within the lowest places in the world below, bismaisik shafim, like it says in the Gemara, even regarding Kishif, gimel klipas atmeis, and the lowest element of klipas in the world is is durch gzeres melech on durch tshuva from yidin lefun chet egel. So this is the decree of Hashem, and through the tshuva of yidin by the chet egel, this is what brought this. So therefore, it's it, the, this is what the Medrash is pointing out that chet egel comes from what the yidin saw at matan teira. At matan teira, it begins, and from what they saw there. It caused the continuation of Chet Egel, which will then elevate Eden to the next level. It's a Hemshech Lamat and Teireh. It's not a, it's not a separate thing. Yeah, it continues, Der Birur von den Nitzaitzis Shebera Hochi Tachten. 
Durch der Tshuva von Chet Egel. So now refining and elevating the lowest element of what happened over here, the lowest sparks in the world through Tshuva on the Chet Egel. So coming back to the theme of this Siche, hat sich eis gedrückt in dem, was die, uh, was die von Erev Rav, weil ich habe gedient dem Egel. That those of the Erev Rav, that actually served Avei the Zara of Egel, und seine geblieben Leben, and they remained alive, haben euch Tshuva getan. That even they as well did Tshuva. Warum der Eid of Rav was heim shichesu vishchisu? It's the Eid of Rav. They were corrupted and corrupted others. Mesisim and medichim. They went and persuaded other yidin to come with them. Was teiris and mezok. And the teiris tells us regarding such individuals as also lelamet chusaleim. One is not allowed to try to see anything positive about such people. Zena from gimel klipes atmeis v'roiz legamri. They are from the absolute total evil in the three klipes that are evil in this world. Ve'em ve'em teif klal. There's no good in them at all. And the tshuva is an is an inyan from the dainus nasus like kizachis. So their tshuva is taken from the lowest level of the dainus and transforming it into zachis. It's habchech shaychel in aire, transforming the lowest darkness that there is into light. Thus is their pirish apnimi in leich aleim mizeh that you should go up from this atav ha'omer shaleisa meretz mitzrayim, the nation you brought up from mitzrayim. The aliyah is mizeh. The elevation here is happening from this, meaning the Aliyah was a Zareiske coming durch den Chet Egel. The Aliyah from the lowest place, even the Eid of Rav that fell and actually served the Egel. It's Kentic. It's only here that you, could, you, you will see that it will be revealed in them was the Eid of Rav. Where is this revealed? Through the Eid of Rav. It is Nistakin on his Alagavan and Ligdusha. When they got elevated to holiness, as from Amcha is Gevaran Ha'am. From your nation that you accepted in the negative sense that Hashem did not accept them, but now they become the nation that Hashem is accepting them and being included in Kedusha. This is a tremendous Chiddush of the Tshuva of Chet Egel to elevate from the lowest level to come to his Hapcha HaShechel and Haida to the highest level. Now in the continuation here, the Rebbe turns to the Haftaira of this week's Parsha. Haftaira's then in Minyanish al Parsha, we know that the theme that we read about in the Avtaira is related to the theme of the Parsha. Gefintman ot dina kude. This point about the Milo of Tshuva, we also find Oich in the Avtaira from Parsha Sisa and the Sipur vegan Eliyo Bahara Karmel. And there it's the story about Eliyo Bahara Karmel in that time period when Yidin was serving of Zara. And Eliyo Anovi challenged all the Yidin that were serving the Baal that they should come to this mountain, Hara Karmel, and they are going to bring their sacrifice their carbon on their Mizbeach and we'll see if a fire will descend from heaven to burn their carbon. And then Elio and Avi is going to bring his carbon and we'll see if a fire is going to descend on his uh, carbon. That, that's the basic story that happened over there. So it says over there in the Medrash as follows. Then in the Par Sha'ala L'Shem Abal. So there was, there was the, the, the bull that was brought that was going to be the carbon for the Avi Dezare. And there was the bull that was being brought that Eliyahu Anavi was going to use to bring it as a carbon for, for the, for the Eivishter. So regarding this par that was being brought for the Baal, for the Vedizare, Zagn Chazal, so the Medrash says, as that it Gevolt came, he didn't he want to move, he didn't want to go. Vam Eliyahu, Loel Miliyahu said that you should go. Who parish Eliyahu? Sorry, again, let's read that again. The, the bull spoke up and said to Elio, who, Parish Elio, the one that was chosen to join you, Elio, he's going to be burnt on the Mizbech in the portion of Hashem. And Hashem's name will be sanctified on him. And I, my portion is to be with the Baal, with the Zara, and I'm going to bring anger to my Creator. I don't want to go. Atelio answers the bull and tells him, Pishem, just like the name of Hashem will be sanctified through the one that's coming with me, Sheimi, the one that's with me, Kach Miskadesh al Yatcha. So too the name of Hashem <coughs> will be sanctified through you as well by you joining and going with the Baal Tavidizara. So what's the simple pshat on this medrash? In Pashtus Menta, so the simple pshat here is Kishem Viparishal Yo. Just like the bull that went along with Elio, that brought about the sanctity of Hashem to be revealed in the world when the fire descended on the Mizbech and consumed that carbon. And it revealed clearly to everybody the truth of Elio and Novi's prophecy. Azoi hotter parsha ol l'shem abal that bull that went with avedizare mekadosh given shmoy shalakadosh baruch also sanctified Hashem's name durch dem was ein koel vein neine 
when the people of the Navi Abal were, were, were praying and begging that the fire should come down and they had a whole plan how this fire will be ignited and it didn't work for them. So by the very fact, Bezer and Akrove, and when they were trying to sac- sacrifice this bull, it did not work for them. So this also sanctifies Hashem's name. But Sabavizn the Falschkeit from the Navi Abal. So because this shows the, the falsehood of those prophets. By Yedezeh, the Emes, Hashem. And also, then also reveals the truth of Hashem. So Leo was telling this bull that the truth of Hashem will be revealed through you as well. That's a simple pshat of the Medrash. This is Abba Nechal, to move on. But the question here is, it seems like the Medrash is saying a deeper point. From Lashna Medrash, if you pay attention to the language of the Medrash, Keshem Shishmoy Shal HaKadosh Baruch Hu Miskadosh HaYadzeh Just like Hashem's name is being sanctified with the bull that's with me, kach, in the same vein, miskadesh ayotcha, in the same exact way, Hashem will be sanctified through you. Is mashma, so it seems, as the kiddush moishal, like Kaddish Baruch Hu, by Bey the Potim, is given by Yifin Shoveh, that Hashem's name being sanctified by both of these bulls is equal. But the question is, seemingly, that Kiddush Hashem, Durch Parshal Elio, Hashem's name being sanctified by the bull that went with Elio, is given Durch and in them par. It was through and in the very par itself that it caused Hashem's fire to come down and consume it. That Emes Hashem is Nizgalagavarin in Zayna Krava. The truth of Hashem's unity in the world is revealed through it being sacrificed on the Mizbeach and in it. by the Parsha, Allah Lashem Abal. By contrast, the, the bull that's being brought up for the Avedizare is Dr. Kiddush Meishal HaKadosh Baruch by Shlili. Over here, Hashem's name is only being sanctified by negating, by showing the falsehood. Zainitakrava, the fact that it's not going to be sacrificed. Hodbavizin as the Baal is Nitemes. So this bull is revealing the fact that Avedizare, the Baal, is untruthful. But Hashem's unity and sanctity is not actually revealed in it. So how could the Medrash say that Eliyo is answering the bull, Kishem Kach, that it's actually equivalent, that the same sanctity of Hashem that's being brought in the world through the bull that's going with me, with Eliyo, is also being revealed in this bull that's going with the Baal, with Avedizara. So here in this response of Eliyo, we see the tremendous smile in Aved of Tshuva. Is there beer in them? So the answer, based on what we said before, is as follows. Durach Avedis Eliyahu, through Eliyahu and Novi Zavedis, on Zayim, Puhullah, as Yidin's own Shuvetan. And the influence that he had on Yidin at that point, that they should do Shuvah. As the Rebbe brings here in the order, that's the famous time when the Yidin all shouted, Hashem Hu Alekim, Hashem Hu Alekim. Is Nizgalag Vana Lamata, the Achtos for Nevish, and this revealed here below the true unity of Hashem. Hashem Hu Alekim, Vidasiz Mitzad Lamaila as it is in its source from the highest place of Hashem's perspective, that the truth of every existence in the world is revealed. Because as a result of this unity that's revealed, you have revealed in everything the word of Hashem, the Pnimius and Kavana from Yedazach in Welt, in Welt. You have the, the Pnimius and the Kavana of everything that exists in the world, in this world itself here. Right? So in other words, it's not only by rejecting things that are evil and by annulling it, but when you reveal the true purpose of everything, which could only be revealed through tshuva, you could reveal the positive energy that's in it within the world itself. Is the Rebbe, so therefore, this is what Eliyahu and Novi is saying to this bull, Kishem, she'imi. Just like Hashem's name is sanctified, and you have the unity of Hashem revealed in the world through this bull that's here with me, in the exact same vein, it's equivalent, so too the level of unity of Hashem revealed in the world through you is the exact same. The Zelba Achtos, the very same level of unity. Varum is the Since through Tshuva, what was revealed over here? It was revealed the pnimius of everything, the pnimius of everything that exists in the, re- in the world that's revealed through tshuva, and therefore also the par shaol l'shem abal, the real entity of what this par, this bull that went for the avodah is revealed in it, vider nitzutz shebe par vet nesalin kedusha, and just and therefore just like the bull that was sacrificed in the mizbeach was elevated into holiness. Through revealing that, through Avaidah of Tshuva, you reveal the true entity of everything in the world, including this part that went for the Avaidah that now the holy spark in it gets elevated and revealed and connected to Hashem. So therefore, that's the Kishem Kach. 
that it's the exact same level of unity that is revealed in the world through the Aveda of Tshuva in everything in the world, including even in the lowest elements of Ra in the world. From this, the Rebbe brings us to a very powerful lesson that we have to take. As there are those in the There are those that their entire enthusiasm is only in things that are all in holiness, in zay, in themselves, regarding all to do things with themselves in a place of holiness. So, uh, so the person argues and says, So he says, here, I can sanctify Hashem's name. I can learn, daven with myself, and, and I'll sanctify Hashem's name. Why deal with things outside of this, of this territory? To go and be, be, be occupied with others that are transgressing and doing Avedis and go outside of, of myself. That he says, was the Al Rebbe is Masber. And so the Al Rebbe says in Tanya, is Yeda Aveda, every Aveda that's done, Heipich Mamish Merotzen Elyon, it goes against the will of Hashem, and thus is Bedugmas Isse Shtachvol Aveda Zara. Now, to Rebbe Tanya says that this is equivalent to someone bowing down to Aveda Zara. In them, Tutanit, to go and occupy himself, to take off his time, to deal with other Yidin, to help them, those that are sinning and those that are outside, that he has no time for. A tainit as a vulnitabim to tamit partial of edizara. He doesn't want to go there. He, do, he doesn't have to be there on that level to deal with partial of edizara, the bull of edizara, to deal with people that are on such a level. Right? And it's it's much greater. It's a much holier aveda to be within in a place of kedusha, connect to Hashem. Yeah, it could be that there's, there's work that has to be done outside over there for in those places of edizara, but it's not the same. How could you compare the level of holiness over there and that level? Of them zokt men, therefore the Elio and Navi here says, "As kishem sheshmoi shal kadosh baruch hu mizkadosh shal yad zeshayimi." Just like Hashem's name is being sanctified through the one that's with me, kach the very same way mizkadosh shal yotcha. It's also sanctified through you, through the bull that's going with Avodah Zara. Ah, di achdos vetnis gale. The same unity of Hashem is revealed in the world. Dafke durech lahaitzi yakar mizaylo. When you take and you bring out the precious sparks of Hashem from Zayla, from the low, worthless place, by bringing those that are not, are, are, they, uh, need someone to help them, come and do tshuveh, and only through this, the premeditated sins are turned into merits. It's dafka through this that you could reveal the true unity of Hashem, which is then equivalent and equal to the Aveda that's done within Kedusha and with the, in the world as well. In everything in the world, you see the same meaning and the same sparks of holiness there. The Adar on the contrary, look in the language of the Medrash. The Seder from Elio is given. The order of what Elio and Novi did was, He first gave the prophets of the Baal of the Zara that they should take their bull and bring it for the Baal. Azazel improvement on this makrev zayin, they should try and sacrifice it for their way desire. On esh the nacha to makrev given zayin part, and only afterwards did he bring and sacrifice his part to Hashem. This haste, what this means is the avodah from the kaddish zayin shmei shal kaddish baruchu durech dem parsha alu l'shem abal that the avodah of sanctifying Hashem's name through the bull that is going for the bal for the avodah zayin kum faren shmei shal kaddish baruchu miskaddish hayad zeshini. That takes precedent, it comes, bef- it comes first before the bull that's being brought for Hashem's name to be sacrificed for Hashem. So too this has to be in every person serving Hashem. Even when one has to bring closer a Yid that has become distant from his uh, heritage. Even if this, this means that you have to take away from your own time of learning Teire and Aveide, which is what is required of you to be together with Hashem. But you need to know that it's required of you to go and bring the sanct- to sanctify Hashem's name in the world by those, by those that are going with Aveide Zara. To bring close to a Yid, that's far from Yiddishkeit. Kishem, and with the same energy, in the same way, in the same way that a person is focusing and the energy that he puts into his own Aveda, on the Aveda, 
Bedugma from the Sipra Teirev Egen Eliyahu Anavi Mevasar Agula. So this double Aveda, the Aveda that's done with the one that's Imi, with Hashem, and the Aveda of bringing all those that are far to the Eibishter. So this is the Aveda of Eliyahu Anavi Mevasar Agula, the one that will bring us the good news of the redemption. But Brengen, the Giyula, Mitzvah, Shleimah, will bring us the full and ultimate redemption, Bekarev Mamish, speedily in our time.